Yes, it's Majid Nawaz here on LBC interviewing Dr. Jordan Peterson. We're going to go straight back to it. You just heard in that first segment him discuss his views on the history of patriarchy and the suicide of young men and depression. Let's go straight back to that interview. You know, I've been aware of your work mainly online um, and we've communicated a few times online. But I first saw you speak, and this is ironic, in the interview I referenced earlier, and that's the Kathy Newman view mm-hmm. on Channel 4. Because to this point, um, you've mentioned, yes, society... Uh, there are many, many, many reasons why uh, life is difficult, um, and one of them is oppression. But there are yeah. many other reasons. So to this point, yeah, like dozens of other reasons. <laughs> indeed, uh, Kathy Newman raised the wage, the gender wage gap with mm. you, and it, your your answer struck me as being somewhat similar. That mm. one of the elements for one of the reasons for this wage gap could be unreasonable sexism. prejudice. That's right. sure. But that you said there are many other reasons. Now she yeah. she she didn't take that well. No, her uh, her attitude was. If you don't think the wage gap is caused by the prejudice of a powerful white men, then you're a bad person. Which is just, that's her implicit argument. And that's just not a good argument. I mean, Warren Farrell, who's a very interesting character, wrote a book called Why Men Earn More. And he actually wrote it for his daughters because he was trying to figure out how they could maximize their earning potential across their lifespan. I mean, he wrote it for popular consumption as well. But he identifies all sorts of reasons why men make more money. And so, and they don't make that much more money. So you don't need that many reasons to account for it. But here, men take more dangerous jobs. Men are more likely to move. Men work longer hours. And if you work 14% longer hours, you make 44% money, 40%, 44% more money. The return is nonlinear. So men tend to work in industries that are scalable. So women prefer care jobs, you know, or, or that's not exactly right. Most of the people who are in human care jobs are female. But the problem with those jobs is they don't scale. You know, you can't take care of 10,000 people, but you can, you can provide electronic resources to 10,000 people. So there's all these complicated reasons why men and women differ in their pay, including, for example, that women are more agreeable than men and agreeable people aren't as good at negotiating on their own behalf with regards to salaries and that women tend to bail out of high level positions in their 30s so that they can have kids which is a perfectly reasonable choice but that has to be all obliterated because the fundamental truth of the matter is that the west is an oppressive patriarchy and all differences to, between groups are to be attributed to oppression so you can't even have a discussion about that if somebody has fundamentally misunderstood this uh multivariate analysis to why there could be a gender pay gap how would they go about attempting to close this gap if they wanted to? I well, mean, I don't know. I don't know. The first question is, is just like, should the gap be closed? Mm. The gap is it's also a very complicated thing. You know, there's a, there's a disproportionate number of extremely high paid men, but they're a tiny minority. But they skew the statistics as well. So are you talking about the median person? Or are you talking about the average person? Because the average is the wrong statistic because it includes that tiny proportion of people who yeah. make an incredible amount of money and almost all of them are men. And like, should the, should the, so the first question is, does the gap exist? And the answer is, well, that's a lot more complicated than you think. And a univariate analysis isn't going to reveal it. The second is, if it does exist, like, why does let's, it let's exist? Let's explain for our listeners what you mean by univariate. Yeah, well, to re- well, a univariate, uni means one, and, and variate means variable. And so, if you're not thinking about things in a differentiated manner, you take your ideology, whatever that is, and you and it has a cause, say oppression, and then you say, well, oppression is causing this 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 disequilibrium. It's like, well, it's possible and no doubt somewhat true, but there's many many other factors that have to be considered, especially if you're going to address it seriously. You know, and, and we're not capable in the least of having serious conversations of this sort. You know, I never hear when, when people are worried about uh, differential representation of men and women in occupations. I never hear people, women, let's say, that, who are concerned about this or the leftists who are concerned about this, complaining about the fact that 99 percent of the bricklayers are men. But they are. You can go on the U.S. Department of Labor site and you can rank order occupations by gender. And there's the, the heavy trades are overwhelmingly male represented. Those are hard, grueling, difficult jobs. They tend to pay quite well. It's like, why aren't, why, why don't we see the radical leftist types who are beating the, beating the drum for equality concentrating on the disproportionate number of men who occupy trades positions? Well, those aren't the high end, high status jobs. And apparently those are the only ones that matter. But there's no reason that they matter. And what about the disproportionate number of men in prison? 
Are we going to do gender equation for prison cells? I've heard feminist scholars seriously uh, propose that, by the way, which is, to me, is just it's a sign of absolute insanity. And if somebody wanted to go about, I mean, the part of this pay gap that is that is related to an unfair prejudice against women, you, you can see that part of it may well be. It may be. Yeah. So if somebody... I wants, don't think the evidence for that is strong, actually. Okay. If you do the controls, you yeah. actually find that in, in, in many situations now, especially for young single people, women have a wage advantage, not a disadvantage. That, that may change as they continue, though, no? Oh, out. yes. Well, yeah. the, the motherhood issue is a killer, yeah. right? That, yeah. that, and that's something that our society needs to sort out, but we don't well, know how. It's life-giving, not a killer. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's it's, it. It's, hard on the, it's hard on your career progression. Yeah. Um, what about paternity leave? Does that fix the motherhood issue? No. Why not? Well, because I, I don't think... It isn't obvious how we can equate the demands of childcare across the genders, or that we should, or that people actually want that. Now, this is muddy water because we don't know precisely. My sense is that the primary burden for child care for, for, for infants, well, during pregnancy, obviously, but for the year after and maybe the year and a half after is going to fall disproportionately on women. It's easier for women to take care of infants than it is for men to take care of well, infants. Breastfeeding is a factor. Well, there's, what if there's well, that is, yeah, that's yeah. actually a factor. And Indeed. breastfeeding actually turns out to be extraordinarily important for children's development. I have a one year old. He's actually now 14, 15 mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. roughly. Um, and honestly, that's what we did. She took time to breastfeed while I focused on this job right here. Well, but. and you know, partly what you do in that situation, I think, yeah. is that for the first year, the man takes care of the mother and the mother takes care of the baby. Now, there's, it's an optional thing where, yep. whereby after that year, um, the father also has an option to take off time um, after the year, after the breastfeeding may not be as crucial, and then looks after the child. So the mother doesn't take too much time away from work. Is that an option you'd be prepared to consider? As, uh, well, I think, that's, that I think that's an option that couples have to discuss. It's up to the couple to yeah, determine how to do this. Yeah. But these things are very complicated. So there's a study a while back um, that showed men... How, ma imagine you're getting uh, a, a group of women to rate the photographs of men for attractiveness. And then imagine that you're testing the hypothesis that one of the things that women might find attractive in men is their willingness to share domestic duties. And so then you show men, you show the women pictures of men engaged in typical domestic activities like vacuuming or doing the dishes. Or you show them engaged in typical masculine activities, say like mowing the lawn or fixing something outside. The women reliably, reliably rate the men who are doing male typical behaviors as more sexually attractive. So these things are complicated. You know, and we think, well, we can, if everyone had goodwill and we just split the tasks equally, then everything would work out. It's like, don't be so sure about that. Well, here, here's, a, here's an interesting issue that's never talked about with regards to gender equality. So, and this is, this is a very well-documented fact. If you look across societies, women mate across and up socioeconomic status hierarchies. So a woman will date and marry someone who makes the same amount of money for her or more. All right. So and that, that's true regardless of the egalitarian nature of the society. It holds true in Scandinavia as well, because you might say, well, that's because of women's lower socioeconomic position. But you can equate for that. And you don't get rid of the phenomena. So one of the things that's driving the aggregation of wealth into fewer and fewer hands is the proclivity of well off women only to wear, marry men who are as well off as they are or greater. Men will marry across and down socioeconomic status hierarchies. So if we're going to enforce equality, does that mean that we don't allow women to marry men who are richer than them? You're speaking in this way, and I'll tell you while listening, I mean, I, I, dare I say that most men know this in their gut. Yes, they certainly do, which is why they're driven to attain status. So Kathy Newman, in that interview that I referenced, pushed back at you in a way that sent the interview viral. And that's how mm -hmm. I first came across. Um, and then I started looking into you, and of course, that, that's what brings us here.